With the dilemma that car shoppers are facing right now in 2023, heading into 2024 with a lack of affordable vehicles, going down the avenue of mid-sized sedans has become a bit of an intriguing proposition. Now, of course, you will be making some sacrifices and concessions. You're going to be losing out on practicality. You might be losing out on the family-friendly aspect compared to, say, a Subaru Outback, Forester, or any other crossover out there on the market these days. But if you're strictly looking at buying a car under $40,000, the midsize sedan segment might be your best friend. Now, of course, this market has seen a shrinkage over the last 10 to 15 years. Not as many brands are offering a car in this market and price range. But you do have the Subaru Legacy with some great packages and features available, including Subaru Symmetrical all-wheel drive system. And in this video, I want to go over everything about the 2024 model because throughout the last few years, there have been a bit of changes when it comes to the exterior styling, but also the trim levels. So we're going to take it out for a test drive, check out the interior, the exterior, and see why, if you are looking at buying a car under $40,000, then maybe taking a look at the Subaru Legacy might be a great decision. Now, before we get in this review, I'd like to thank Subaru Wakefield in Wakefield, Massachusetts for allowing me to film this video. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Subaru inventory. And speaking of inventory, Subaru Wakefield is home to the largest selection of Subarus in New England. Right now, if you're looking at buying a Crosscheck, an Impreza, Outback, Legacy, or Forester, they have plenty of vehicles on the lot available. So you've probably noticed that other dealers out there maybe have limited inventory, but Subaru Wakefield has everything available on the lot right now. So definitely check out what they have, whether it's new or used. Also, before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. In the 2020s, we think of Subaru today as being a crossover dominant manufacturer, as even the Outback, which is essentially a lifted station wagon, is considered an SUV by the brand. But in 2023, the Legacy is one of only four models left in the lineup that isn't off-road worthy, with the WRX and BRZ being for enthusiasts and the Impreza, which can now only be purchased as a hatchback. Leaving the Legacy as the only traditional sedan that's not sports-tuned, dynamic, or rugged. With buyers struggling to find affordable transportation, that's where the Legacy could make a lot of sense, especially for shoppers who are solely looking for a daily driver. Starting off with pricing, the Limited comes in at just under $32,000, which for those keeping track is well below the average price for a brand new car in 2023. Where Subaru gains its appeal and draws in loyal customers is with its unconventional approach to this market, especially in this era with the standard all-wheel drive system, but also the brand's willingness to continue pressing forward with the idea that the mid-size sedan segment's purpose is primarily for comfort and being family friendly. Despite the Legacy being slightly smaller than its closest rivals, with a length of 191 inches, which is about 2 inches shorter than the Camry and Altima, you'll be surprised at how practical and spacious this sedan really is when we check out the interior. Following in the footsteps of the Subaru Outback, the Legacy received a streamlined and more aerodynamic front fascia last year wearing Subaru's new design language that helps keep the lineup looking modern and up-to-date. Becoming a signature look, the great contrasting accents now extend outside of the grille, almost touching the housings for the standard steering responsive LED headlights. While Subaru has always been lenient with their body lines, especially throughout the last few generations for the Legacy, the minor facelift has made this sedan more noticeable on the roadways. Capping off the front portion of this car, the LED fog lights will provide improved illumination on dimly lit back roads, while simultaneously playing a small role in the sleekness of this sedan. Moving over to the side profile, the Limited will be sitting on 18-inch machine finish alloy wheels. And while there may be some apprehension about upsizing on the tires compared to the Premium, because Subaru suspension is very soft and forgiving, ride quality won't be diminished. However, road noise entering the cabin may be more audible compared to the 17s. You'll have body color folding side mirrors with turn signal indicators to go along with blind spot detection for added safety. 
Then as we make our way around to the back, the rear fascia went mostly untouched heading into the 2023 model year when Subaru refreshed this sedan. With the WRX slotting into place as being the aggressive and sporty car in the lineup, the Legacy once again takes the reserved and understated approach to the road presence, which for Japanese brands has become par for the course, as many of the Legacy's competitors outside of Hyundai and Kia have fully embraced selling points that appeal to shoppers who want fuel efficiency and modern tech rather than a striking design. Powering the Legacy Limited is a 2.5-liter Boxer four-cylinder engine, producing 182 horsepower and 176 pound-feet of torque, and this powertrain is paired with a CVT. Prior to the sport trim being introduced to the lineup, the Limited did come available with a 2.4-liter turbo, but now this model takes on the role as being the middle child, where you'll receive better features and interior comfort, but no boost in performance. Since most of the Legacy's rivals use similar powertrains and transmissions, Subaru's family sedan falls right in line with the Honda Accord and Nissan Altima. And while upgrading to the turbo would be an appealing choice, the 2.5 propels you right along with a linear power band, despite the 8 second 0 60 time. Where the Legacy does make a splash is with Subaru's symmetrical all wheel drive system coming standard, which has made the sedan very competitive throughout the years as traditionally, cars in this segment are front-wheel drive only. For fuel economy, you're looking at right around 27 miles per gallon in the city and 35 miles per gallon on the highway. Now with Subaru standardizing the 11.6-inch touchscreen, even for the premium, the list of add-ons by opting for the Limited is where you may feel compelled to spend a little extra. You'll be greeted by power-adjustable and heated leather seats for both the driver and passenger, with the driver's side having memory seat functionality. A feature that's often overlooked with the Legacy is programming in driver settings, such as seat and mirror positioning, so when it's your turn to drive, you won't have to manually adjust everything to your desired comfort. Further incorporating creature comforts into your ownership experience, by opting for the $2,000 package available for the Limited, you'll receive a heated steering wheel, onboard navigation, a power moonroof, and Subaru's driver focus distraction mitigation system, which promotes safe driving habits. What's not equipped on the Legacy, and likely won't be for some time, is a full digital instrument cluster, but you still have the information display in between the analog gauges. Returning to the head unit, there will be physical buttons for the dual zone climb control and front and rear defrosters, with dials for the volume and tuning mounted on both sides of the user interface. As with any Subaru using this infotainment system, the fan speed, heated seats, and AC adjustments will be placed at the bottom of the screen. With the Limited, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility do come standard, along with the upgraded 12-speaker Harman Kardon Premium Audio System. As always, you will have a rear backup camera with trajectory and standard for this trim is reverse automatic braking and rear cross-traffic alert. Below, you'll have a cubby for a smartphone, with a wireless phone charging pad being a $350 option, and a tier where you'll find a USB and USB-C input. And rounding out the front seating area for the center storage compartment, you should have enough room for a smartphone or wallet. Quickly taking a look at the second row seating area for the Subaru Legacy. If you're cross shopping this sedan with rivals such as the Toyota Camry, Nissan Altima, and Honda Accord, the Subaru Legacy will be sitting near the top in this market when it comes to interior dimensions for the second row. At around 39 and a half inches of legroom, this is better than what we see from the Camry and far better than what we see from the Altima. So if you are looking for a family friendly car that isn't a crossover, the Legacy has to be on your list of considerations. Now there are a few things to point out here. Since the Legacy is a sedan, you do have a lower roof line, so taller passengers might be hitting their head on the headliner. Also, we do have an aggressive center hump, which might take away from legroom and shoulder room where you might not be able to squeeze in that third person on a longer drive. So that will be something you have to keep in mind, but we see the same thing with the Outback as well. Also, with this model being a limited, we have the leather upholstery, which really gives you a lot of comfort and support. 
Of course, I do like the cloth seats that come with the premium. So it really just boils down to what you're looking for in a daily driver. Also back here, we do have two rear air vents to go along with the USB-C and USB input. Also, we have two level heated outboard seats on this model. And rounding out the second row seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around to the back, of course, you're not going to receive a power trunk on a sedan, but inside behind the second row seats, you're looking at right around 15 cubic feet of room, which would be on par with a lot of midsize sedans in this market, such as the Nissan Altima and Toyota Camry. Now, this is really where you are gonna be making some sacrifices if you are going to opt for a sedan over a crossover, more specifically the Subaru Outback, which is pretty much double the size of this cargo area. But if you are strictly focused on buying a sedan, this is pretty good for its class. I was able to fit all my camera gear today, no problem. So that's two bags of camera gear, a gimbal box, and a tripod, and still had additional room for some items, such as maybe if I went to the grocery store afterwards or if I was running some errands. Also, this cargo area is deceptively wide with some side pockets where you could probably fit some jugs of water or a first aid kit. Then, of course, with the second row seats folded, you can fit longer items, and that way you can maybe move around some boxes if you are moving to a new apartment. Also back here beneath the floor mat, you are going to have a spare tire. So you do encounter a flat on your road trips or travels, you can fix that and be back on the road. And finally, for the moat we've all been waiting for, let's take the Subaru Legacy out for a test drive. So we're now behind the wheel of the Subaru Legacy. And believe it or not, considering how many times I have featured Subarus on the channel, this is the first time I'm actually doing a test drive of a Legacy with the 2.5. So I wanna see how this compares to the 2.4 I had featured almost two years ago, but also how this compares to other midsize sedans in this market. Subaru more so than their domestic rivals tune their cars primarily for leisure and comfort. They're not gonna be aggressive or dynamic outside the WRX. And I think that if you are somebody who is more of an enthusiast, you're gonna wanna go in that direction. Or if you're somebody who has a lead foot, you're gonna wanna go with the 2.4 with the 260 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque, just because it will give you more of an exhilarating driving experience. For the 2.5 though, there's nothing necessarily remarkable about this car. It performs quite well, very smooth accelerations. Also, of course, Subaru does a fantastic job with their CVTs, where you feel as though you're driving a car with a traditional automatic. What buyers have to get used to in this market is that this segment is changing. Where even Honda dropped the V6, they no longer offer a manual, and they're going more reserved with their styling. Subaru's kind of already been there and done that, although for the 2023 and 2024 models, you did get more of an aggressive front fascia, which really opened the door for the sport trim. So Subaru is trying to play around with the idea of giving you something a bit more exhilarating and fun, especially when it comes to the design. And I do think it does go a long way where it does look a bit more dynamic. But for this particular segment though, having a car with 182 horsepower, give or take, with a CVT is pretty much par for the course in this segment. And you do have an adequate amount of power when you are on the highway. You can pass lower drivers. What buyers are also gonna love too is that this powertrain is rather mute. It doesn't really give that droning feel that you would find with other CVTs in this market. Also, of course, with it being a four cylinder, usually you don't get the best sounding experiences when you are on throttle. But for a daily driver, for a commuter car, this is really just giving you the basics. It's giving you a car that you have the power to pass lower drivers. It also really stays nice and centered in its lane, so it does have a nice lower center of gravity. And it just becomes a car that really just gives you the creature comforts at an affordable price point where we do have leather upholstery and also heated seats. But even when you are on throttle, when you wanna pass some of the slower vehicles that are in the middle lane, it can easily do that. So I don't think that you're gonna feel compelled to opt for the turbo. Also more importantly is that you don't really hear a lot of road noise in this car, which is one thing that Subaru has been playing around with, especially with the Subaru Global Platform, where everything is about refinement, but also rigidity to the chassis. And the same goes for the Legacy. And we have seen them really improve 
on the sound deadening, making it a bit more isolated from the outside world. And even though we do have the larger tires with the Limited, it's not going to really be a factor when it comes to the driving experience. Because the Subaru Legacy has taken on this more mature demeanor, much like its closest rivals, not only when it comes to the interior layout, but also the design as well, the driving dynamics differ quite a bit from the WRX, which kind of opens the opportunity for the WRX to reach a bit more of a wider demographic, which is why I think we're seeing more emphasis on that CVT for this generation for the WRX. And as a result, the legacy isn't going to be dynamic as it may have been 15, 20 years ago. And a lot of that is because this car is really going head to head with other more laid back cars like the Camry, like the Accord. And with that, you're gonna have a lighter steering. You're gonna have the typical Japanese driving experience where the steering isn't gonna be too tight. It is direct, but it's not going to be putting you on the edge of your seat. However, when you are driving in the city or the suburbs, its maneuverability makes it perfect for those who are maybe hopping in from an Impreza or a Crosstrek who are looking to make an upgrade to a bigger vehicle. Also, of course, too, with this car is that Subaru is really relying heavily on the intangibles with the all-wheel drive system, also the amount of legroom that you have in the back for the second row. So it's more family friendly, and that's really what Subaru banks on. That's really been their MO throughout their entire lineup. Now, of course, with their crossovers, they're really buying into the off-road experience with the wilderness trim. But for the Legacy, this is more of a car that is a, more of a step up for people who have maybe owned and Prezes or Crosstrex in the past, and they're looking for something that's more luxurious, a bit more upscale, especially under $40,000. And with the leather upholstery, it's nice and comfortable in here. They do provide a decent amount of bolstering, which is not something I would have expected for a car in this market. Also another thing too, really going back to the fact that the Subaru's global platform is all about refinement. What they've done to the interior to this car, the soft touch materials on the dashboard, the armrest, it really just goes a long way. It makes this car feel more premium than the price tag would suggest. When it pertains to the suspension and on-road comfort, I think Subaru does a fantastic job of giving you a vehicle that is family friendly and also not having you feeling those bumps and imperfections where you're not gonna be getting those jolts, you're not gonna be getting thrown around. And Subaru does that better than a lot of other manufacturers. And I think some journalists will say, well, that really adds to the lack of a remarkable driving experience to the Legacy, where there's really nothing that you could point to and say that this car is unique in a sense. However, for a lot of buyers that really are not looking for a sportier experience, they want a car that is safe, that is comfortable, that is practical, relatively speaking, for the sedan market. That's where the Super Legacy becomes an appealing option and one that really does make sense, especially with the 2.5, because you're getting better fuel efficiency as well compared to the 2.4. So it becomes a perfect head-to-head -head comparison to the Camry, to the Accord. But also something too is that because you get that all-wheel drive system standard, buyers in the Northeast or colder regions of the US might be more apt to choose a legacy over some of the rivals that don't offer all-wheel drive. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Boston Auto Blog so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.